Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Summer 69-72 Carryover League. Tonight, we're in the America League North. Folks, I'm trying to present a baseball game to you, all of you, but boy, whew, man, these teams are playing. This division is playing some rough baseball this year. Let's go to the uh, standings, if you want to call it that, in the American League North. All right, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Cleveland Indians had a, had a terrible year. They've lost some close games. They've had some bad luck. They traded for Gaylord Perry in the offseason. He's he of the 192 ERA in 1972. He's one and six. I bring them up first in last place because they're only three and a half games out of first. And the Tigers are in second place, two years removed from winning a World Series. 14 and 17. And today we have the Ohio Players and the Expos. Uh, Expos are up three games to two in this series. If they were to win this game and win the series, they'd be a game out of first place where the Tigers and Ohio Players would be tied at three games under 500. And the Indians would only be three games out of first place. So, yeah. Obviously, one team goes to the playoffs, and mercifully, that's enough. Game six in Expo Land. Today's pitchers for the Ohio players, Rudy May. And for the Expos, Gary Wasilewski. Let's get started. Gene Kleins will lead it off. 2 3. Pops the third. Lou Klimchak, Hayes. Chuck Hinton, 33, bounced to short. Adolfo Phillips, 33, skies left. Ron Brand, 512, skies to right. Mac Jones, skies to right. Top of two. Mike Brown, 66, flies to right. Willie Smith, 26K. Johnny Jeter, 23, bounce to short. So we'll probably get a perfect game today. You know, because that's how this stuff works every once in a while. Actually, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, Cocola Boys, guys to uh, center field. Rusty Staub, pops the second. Bob Bailey, there goes the, no it doesn't, 2-9, single one to two, lines up. Dueling perfect games, that's what happens when you have two awful teams, yeah. Dave Cash, 69, center. J.C. Martin, 6-10, bouncer to short. This is Bobby Wine, a 2-E-20 at short. Next to play. Darrell Thomas, 48 walk. There goes your no, your perfecto. Gene Kleins, 34. Grounds a short. Bottom of the third. Ron Fairley, 49. And there goes, there's a hit. Triple one to five, double is a triple off of the May card. Gotta bring the infield up for A Bunning Woodward. One nine, short B, guns him down at the plate. That's how that works. Bobby Wine bounces a short. Daryl Thomas a 3E38. And he boots that ball. First and second with one out. Adolfo Phillips. 37 is a walk. And the bases are loaded for Ron Brand. 1-7. Let's take a look at Ron Brand. From the 69 Expansion Expos. Backup catcher to John Bateman. Gets work against lefties. 1-7 uh, is his hardest hit ball. He didn't hit an, uh, any double homers or triples. That is a double with the bases loaded. Good timing. Two-run double for Ron Brand, and it's 2 nothing Spose. Still with one out. Infield's up for Mac Jones. Center be question mark. This is Adolfo Phillips. 16-17-18. Against the zero arm, he scores. The 18s. 18s, 19s, and 20s automatically score for the home team. I don't uh, have them thrown out the plate, even if they roll the out number. So it'll be Coco LaBoy, the runner at second and two outs. 5-10 off Rudy Mays, the bouncer short. And that, 338 is going to be an error on the shortstop. Daryl Thomas runs on the corners for Rusty Staub, and he bounces the short. 3 nothing Spos in the fourth. Lou Klimchak, 37, second. Chuck Hinton, 210, short. 
Ike Brown, 46, and he finally gets a hit. It's a double. Willie Smith with two outs and back to back. Homer one to two, double off Wazalewski is a double. We got a 3 1 game. Johnny Jeter, 39 is a K. Bottom of four, Bob Bailey, 65, flies left. Ron Fairley, 56, flies to right. Woody Woodward, bounces to the third base. Top of five, Dave Cash, a recent slump. Pushed him down to the seventh spot in the lineup. 56 is a bouncer to second. Woodward is a 316 mix to play. JC Martin, 47, single on a one, line to short. And Daryl Thomas, 54, center X. Wazalewski, Dolpho Phillips, a 3E7 in center field, makes the grab. So, with a 3-1 lead and being a starter six, Wazalewski cannot lose this game. We'd pull him in the six if he puts two guys on. Rudy Mays, a starter seven, down 3-1, trying to keep this series alive for the players. Bobby Wine, 58, pops a second. Adolfo Phillips, 2-9, is a walk. Ron Brand, hmm. Let's do a hit and run this time, just to break things up a little bit. Hit and run moves the runner up. We've been a double play. That's nice to know. Runner at second, two outs. Mac Jones, 6'10, catcher's card. This will not score him. 46. Pass ball, and the inning is over. Bottom of five is over. Let's take a break a moment and pause for station identification. This is the Shrimp Crawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, sixth inning. Ohio players. Kind of slump in this series. Gene Klein's 34. Bounce to short. Lou Klimchuk, 1-3. Bounce to second. Chuck Hinton, 1-6. Let's take a look at Chuck Hinton's card. It's been in a couple All-Star games as the Ohio player representative with this particular card. And what's not to love about it? Hits both ways, homers, walks, plays every position you can ask other than shortstop. Hit 318 for the Indians in 1970 with over 200 plate appearances. This is not a fluke, at least in 70 it wasn't. 1-6, homer, 1-2-10, and it is gone. We got a 3-2 game. Ike Brown, 3-11, flies all right. Bottom of the sixth, Rudy May. Coke Cola Boy, 48. Double one of four is a single. Rusty Staub, Laurent Grand, lines a second. Bob Bailey, 2-3, is a 5-4-3. Double play, Rudy May pumps his fist, gets to the dugout. We got a one-run game in the seventh. Wazlewski, but this is where when we get late in the game, if you want to start turning the the lesser players, the lefties around, Willie Smith and JC Martin, it's pretty easy to do. Just throw a lefty in there, John Morris or Fred Sherman, your choice. Let's go with Fred Sherman and potential clincher. Let's take a look at Fred here. Plucked off the Tigers, I believe. A lot of nice players plucked off the Tigers in this particular series. Ike Brown plucked off the Tigers. And you saw Chuck Hinton plucked off the Indians. Lou Klimchuk plucked off the Indians. A lot of times expansion teams get their players from the other teams in the division because it serves two purposes. It weakens the one and strengthens the other. So Fred Sherman comes on in the seventh. Willie Smith cannot hit lefties. He will leave. It'll be... Bill Robinson, Bill Robinson, Bill Robinson. Warning, danger, look at this card. Yeah, there's not much danger on it. But he will hit away here. Very young Bill Robinson, actually. This is a 69 card. And then he was in the minor leagues for a few more years before he came back up in like 73. So he was just brought up too soon with this card. Bill Robinson, 1-9. It's a pop to second base. John Jeter, 68, single one of four, lines out on a seven. And Dave Cash, 512, is a K. Rudy May will continue into the seventh. It is stretch time. We've been listening to the great 
uh, Jackie Me Too from 1970. Now, now, all about now. Great mix of covers and dubs and Jackie on the, you know, tinkling around there. Beautiful music. All right, here we are, we're back. It'll be Ron Fairley leading off the bottom of the seven. 310, this guy's all right. Woody Woodward, 65, flies a left. And Bobby Wine, 65, same thing, flies a left. Rudy May is trying to get his team into a game seven. Fred Sherman in the eighth inning, trying to get, and you got rubber-armed Mike Marshall, literally rubber-armed. Everyone, the underlating, ankle-throwing way he does does things. Uh, underlating uh, wrist, I should say. Anyway, J.C. Martin will leave. Dave Watkins comes in to pinch hit. You're seeing the struggles of a super expansion team when you see Dave Watkins. He had dollar seventy-six. So your two righties off the bench. Bill Robinson was a buck seventy-one, and Dave Watkins is a buck seventy-six, and you get the idea. Here he is, and they're in first place. <laughs> so here is Dave Watkins off Sherman. Uh, one six is a K. Daryl Thomas. Four ten center X. Adolfo's a three e seven, and he makes the catch with two outs. It's Gene Kynes now. I think it's time, yeah. Turn it back around. Nice pitching for Sherman. Gets five outs, and it'll be Mike Manor Martian coming on here in the eighth. Let's see if we can get the final four outs. Mike Marshall to Gene Kleins. Pitch. 43. Left X. This is the Maxter. Mac Jones a 314. And he plays it into a double. That wasn't smart. With two outs, it's Lou Klimchok, but Marshall's very good against lefties. Doesn't matter, Lou Klimchok, 1-5. Homer won the 12 double, and we're tied. Maybe we'll get extra innings, yay. yay. Runner at second, two outs, Chuck Hinton, two sevens a K. All right, right back where we were before this game started. Tied, Rudy May, he's giving you seven, one of the situations where he had the loss, taken off the hook. Don't want to necessarily put him back on the hook for a loss. We're hooking him. We're going to ask Mudcat Grant and Company to get us into a game seven. So they'll they'll quickly go to Mudcat Grant as a relief three to give him at least three innings. And it'll be Adolfo Phillips. 6-12, left B. Ron Brand, 2-7, the single one of 16 is a base hit. The Maxter, Mac Jones, 56, right B, and with two outs. Coco LaBoy, 53, first C. We'll go to the ninth, Ike Brown. 67, K's. Bill Robinson, 2-9 against a righty is a walk. One of only two on bases on his car. Way the things go. John Jeter. 2 4, center. And with two outs, it's Dave Cash. 1 4, short. We may be here for a while. Jim Grant, bottom of the ninth. Unless Larange Grand can send one into the Expo Night. 1 6! Take a look, folks! Just mentioned it! Larange Grand! The legend! The man! The restaurateur! Lilia, the um, what was his nickname with the Mets? Can't remember. Anyway, one six Homer, one a sixteen, rolls a nine and walks this thing off, and the Expo fans are losing their minds. Visions of possibly winning a division in their head. No extra innings. <laughs> Thankfully, mercifully, and the American League North has just tightened up even more for what it's worth. What a game for the Spos. Mike Manor Martian gets a win. Inning in a third. Let's see, two hits and a run. A walk and two Ks. 
Nice inning and two thirds for Sherman, two Ks. Gary Wasilewski then just ends up with a no decision. A three hitter though, with um, two runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Mudcat Grant, sorry about that buddy. Uh, two hits and a walk off home run in the bottom of the ninth. Mudcat was an all-star last year. Mm, I don't think he's had an opportunity to get saves this year. Uh, Rudy May got taken off the hook for the loss. He only gave up three hits in a disastrous third inning, but you had an error in there. You had a few errors in there. I don't know if anything's earned. Let's just call it zero and call it good. Two walks and no strikeouts. One double oh nine oh one oh eight four five three five two seven two zero. Game six in the books, and oh boy, we're gonna have to do a sort here and find out. <laughs> What the uh, first place, the teams who finish the uh, All-Star break in first and second meet in the first round of the postseason tournament to determine who's in first. Kind of like it's a little Abbott and Costello routine, sort of. And we'll get to that shortly. The... Expos could not quite close it. If they would have won this series in five games instead of six games, they would have had a chance to play for the divisional lead, but they're just going to fall short. The Spos are 12 and 16. They're hitting 246 with a 393 ERA. The um, Ohio players are 13 and 15, hitting 260 with a 426 ERA. We have played. 433 games at this point. Hitting 259. Remember I was saying we want to get under 260. We have 385 here. I wanted to get it under 4. Got it under 390. So the pitching has arrived as we get near the All-Star break. And uh, let's do it. See if I need to do a sort of the standings here. No, they're in the right order. Well... I think the American League has played all its, um, they can only have National League series left. No, I got the Orioles and Yankees still have to play. Uh, well, the Ohio players do currently have the number four seed in the American League as the worst division winner, but they have a mere half game lead on the Tigers and a game lead on the Expos. And just a sneak peek of how the postseason tournament works. The top two teams play to do up to seven games to determine who's in first place, which means most likely a best of seven, but head-to-head -head is worked into it. So we'll have to, to look and see how Ohio and Detroit played head-to-head. -head. Then after that series is over, third place and fourth place team to eliminate the fourth place team. And the third place team, depending on how good they do and how close they are to the top, these Expos for instance, may end up in second, or perhaps in first, going into the next round of the tournament. And then they might drop back down again. So it's a three-week three, three week tournament. It's an up to seven, an up to five, and an up to three. Uh, step one is to eliminate the fourth place teams because you can't have a playoff team in fourth place. Um, you've got four division winners and two wild cards. Let's say division winner, wild card, wild card. Fourth place team right here. You know, so the fourth place teams in each division get eliminated in the first round of the postseason tournament. But we'll get to more of that uh, once we get to the All Star game, and then after that, the uh, mid season recap video. All right, thanks for checking the video out. We'll see you next time.